And now I present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, we are here. And you were there. And you were there. There used to be a television program. You are there. Well, welcome everyone. Greetings. Welcome everyone to Progressive Discussions. I'm your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. And uh, I would like to introduce my illustrious co host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? Yep. Oh, he's alive. Live and kicking. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's alive! It's alive! I'm, I, I am uh, reverting back to, uh, well, our, our other shows are called that progressive discussions but I, I am reverting back to the original name progressive discussions because uh, some um, wise guy uh, posted on YouTube that uh, we are we are as hard hitting as a glass of scotch he was saying we're not we're not a hard hitting truth show because uh, I guess he's he's noticing the the I don't want to say the ups and downs of the show, but you know, sometimes we get into lighter subjects, some lighter than others, and some very heavy duty. So I would say Progressive Discussions is a nice neutral name because that's what we are. I would say the man has to define his terms. Hard hitting. What does he mean he, by hard hitting? Maybe he wants what to be. What does it have to do with us? Maybe Why would it affect us? Because it, it bothers different. me when somebody criticizes yeah. my product. I was just saying. Uh, it, it bothers the it bothers shit you. out of me. The shit and out of me. And guess what? What? People would love to do that. The, um, he, um, he's a heckler because he has no, he has no uh, comment about the content of the show whatsoever. Yeah, well. Just, uh, you know. I, why would you take his I think, comments? I think or he, criticism, uh, because I don't like it. But that doesn't mean you take it. Yeah. Uh, I think he. I think a lot of people, a lot of punks, uh, a lot of mainstream people, especially uh, people that are nothing in their personal life, and they ha some of them have no life. I think <clears throat> maybe his uh, interpretation of the word hard-hitting truth is whether or not someone can entertain him maybe we're just not we're not he we're not getting him all excited enough why is he so important well you know what i don't like people talking shit about my product that's all yeah but that doesn't mean that he's correct yeah. you giving him this uh 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 uh, uh advantage over you makes it like he's now, correct. Now, of course, if I was running for president in 2016 and um, and Scott Walker or um, Mike Huckabee or um, uh, uh, whatever, whoever, uh, said something that was inaccurate and derogatory about me and my campaign, I would probably flip out also. and uh, But I would come at them with full fury of facts and expose. But guess what? I will expose the dirty, dirty what? dirt that they have under their carpet. But guess what? What? Fox News will continue to hammer at you until the people believe it. And I will continue to fight tooth and nail with Fox News. Because perception, my friend, trumps reality. As far as Fox well, News, if your if your if your if your uh, if your future is in insane asylum, yeah, I would what agree. What did Mr. Goebbels say? Keep okay. on repeating it. That's correct. the bullshit. That's correct. Now, speaking of insane, and it worked. Speaking of insane asylum, uh -oh. I would like to state that uh, 
on the record? On the record that, uh, uh, written in stone, that uh, Mr. Mike Huckabee is certifiably insane. He, uh, uh, um, the little ugly inbred looking troll with the big forehead, uh, does not deserve to be on a ten dollar bill. She does it. I uh, would say she deserves, her face deserves to be printed on toilet paper. But not on a ten dollar bill. Did Huckabee say that or was that Carly Fiorina? Oh my god. And she wears a lot, she's ugly with a lot of makeup on. With the makeup on she's ugly as all hell. Really? Horse face Fiorina. <laughs> Horse face <gasps> Fiorina. <laughs> Um, look, I don't pay much attention to her because as a businesswoman, she has, Hell a, yeah. she has a horrible track record. Horrible track Hell record. Hell yeah. Not to mention outsourcing jobs. Oh yeah. She didn't mention that, did she? No, I'm talking about what she did for Hewlett Packard. Drove him into the ground, but guess what? what? It was illegal to sell to Iran at that time, and they sold computers and parts to Iran. Much like Cheney did. Well, look, look at the only thing a CEO really cares about is making the buck. Yes. Well, actually, that's the only thing a, a Republican cares about is profit o over everything. Yeah. Uh, Donald Trump, uh, he he enjoys the fact that he is a businessman. But look at his record. He's a dealer. He's a wheeler and dealer, uh, a kiss dealer, limousine riding. Uh, jet flying, a son of a gun. Woo! No, he's not Ric Flair. No, but he's a um, born with a silver spoon in his mouth. He's spoiled. He's a coddle. He's he's uh, boisterous, obnoxious. He's a thinner version of Chris Christie. He's a bone. He's just an all-around asshole. But uh, um, but he can be because he's worth uh, ten billion dollars. Some people say it's only four. Now he's probably exaggerating that. Yeah. But he, he Ooh, no. is a... Uh, his past is full of bankruptcies. Uh, no, no, that's for the companies, not for him. Not for him, okay. okay. Thank you. No, but no, he's... You know, he... he Donald Trump is en is pure entertainment in in an uh, uh, otherwise very boring... Well, he, he's uh, doing uh, one thing really 2016 great. 2016 campaign. He's wow. doing one thing really great. He's... He's... He's showing what the other ones don't have. Nothing. When, when Donald Trump debates the other yeah. uh, uh, poor excuses for career politicians, the yeah. other Republicans. They got nothing. The clown bus. Used to be a clown car, now it's a clown bus. Yeah. When Donald Trump is doing a tremendous service to Bernie Sanders because yeah. he's making the Republican Party look worse and worse as the weeks roll by in a way so is mike huckabee and um and uh no, ted, not, and not, ted cruz doing yeah, it so but not for their supporters their supporters will support them through anything their supporters need to get their shit kicked out of them uh -huh. see this blackthorn shillelagh this is what the uh, evangelical here i'm gonna do a little first of all i'm gonna I'm going to imitate the evangelical zealot, uh, 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 born again freaks. I'm going to take up serpents. Oh, I'm hey, easy, brother. Easy, boy. Don't don't knock over my tea. I'm going to be taking up serpents. Look, Mike Huckabee, uh, 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 the ugly uh, inbred uh, uh, Kim Davis. I'm taking up serpents as a serpent. Now, actually. I'm gonna honor. Hey, I'm gonna honor the evangelical so much. I'm gonna wear the serpent. Wear the snake. Why not? <laughs> hey. Uh, by the way, wraps you, around you me perfectly. Look at that, hey, man. You mentioned Mr. Bernie not Sanders. Not bad for a buck. Please go into the fact um, that he was in Hacky Sack the other day, oh, and nobody told okay. nobody. That's the piece de resistance. That is what I'm leading into. Okay. But first, let me let me be done. You know what? Leave him there. This was a. Oh wait a minute! I got him backwards. This is oh, a sperm. Geez. This was a sperm in a moment idea, but I think it's. It looks pretty good. There you go. Come on. There you go. Take it up, serpents, brother. Let him lick your nipple there. 
Yeah. There you go. He's is he centered nice? Yeah, though? yeah, he's cool. <laughs> hey, seven bells for for the for the uh, evangelical serpent. Bingo. See, bellboy. We do have a sense of humor here, so I am really I apologize to those that feel that we weren't hard hitting enough for you. I wouldn't apologize to nobody. I'm being sarcastic. Well, but uh, um, We do what we do. You don't like it? Hey, go yeah. elsewhere. Don't watch! There you go. We're, we're very anti-censorship. Watch if you Fox don't, News. If you don't. They're hard hitting and fair and balanced. Fair and uh, ba yeah, balanced yeah. with lies. Fair and balanced. Uh, um, uh, and, and very cruel, mean-spirited people. Okay. Anyway, um, everything insane, to make a long story short, everything insane, stupid, preposterous, ridiculous, <coughs> everything negative that comes from the Republican Party is, a, is doing a service to Bernie Sanders. Speaking of Bernie Sanders, first let me get the formalities over with. Yeah. I would like to say greetings to my near dear a friend, uh, 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 that, that I care about very much, uh, Miho from Osaka, Japan. Greetings, Miho. And I would like to salute uh, a man that I am very, very exceedingly proud of, more than before. Now I am totally convinced this guy is one of a kind. Mr. Mm. Bernie Sanders, Senator Bernie Sanders um, was, I didn't know this because of the scumbag piece of shit local media we have here in New Jersey and New York, did not, did not post, not even in the newspaper, did not post. Not even on Facebook. Did not post that Bernie Sanders was in our area in Hackensack, New Jersey, which is the capital of our county, which is Bergen County. He was here. I would have went, but I didn't know he was here. And uh, as Bernie Sanders was walking, oh, by the way, I'm very proud that Bernie Sanders. Uh, uh, he walks the picket line with, un with union workers on strike. Of course. Nobody else does that. But getting back to Bernie Sanders is a hero. Bernie Sanders, in his march, in his walk with, with the people, uh, noticed that a house was on fire. What happened was one of the kids attempted to cook a meal without the parents being there. Mm. Hey, you still want to have kids nowadays? <laughs> Burn the house down, right? Bernie Sanders with the firemen, Bernie Sanders rushed into the house to see if anybody was there. And um, apparently, I think the firemen evacuated everyone, but Bernie Sanders found the family dog, picked it up, and carried it out of the house. And uh, Bernie Sanders was, I don't know if he still is, in Hackensack University Medical Center being treated for smoke inhalation. So we wish you... I didn't, I didn't know about that part. Yeah, we wish, I'm sure, they're not going to let me go up there and see him. Not Hell no. Not Senator Bernie Sand. They don't know me from Adam. Especially if I wore this... Oh, of course. Well, and maybe, you know, you ought to... Black Lives Matter. And then maybe you'll be able to get in there. To make a ruckus. You mean they would still... Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Do an Al Jolson and make believe I'm black, but... Hey, if I wore, face, a what if I, wa face, what if I walked in the hospital with the serpent? Oh, they're really going to let me upstairs, right? How can be, Mike? Anyway, hero Bernie Sanders, get well, recover quickly. You are a hero. I, I took that article and I posted it everywhere I can, on Jesse Ventura's page, on Left Action, on, on some other progressive pages, and of course mine, the group and the Progressive Discussions page. I am really <clears throat> shocked that this did not make any mainstream media. Well, now you see how they're treating him. Not even... They're keeping him from us. Not even that 
lame corporate cocks, coke sucking corporate whore uh, News 12 New Jersey uh. that is the most distraction, unnecessary, stupid, unimportant, distraction filled uh, 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 news network that exists. They, they even do, they even give Chris Christie compliments. They don't say anything negative about, right. about Republicans and corporations. Nothing. It's all about Mary Jane won the tournament, the volleyball, ball, the volleyball hey, tournament in, in a such, in this town down in, uh, mid, whatever, Middlesex County, New Jersey or Ocean County. Oh, what a what a what a great team on that high school in Ocean County, New Jersey! All, right, all, right. all crap <laughs> to distract. And then, and then they repeat it three or four times during the day, constantly, nonstop, constantly, nonstop. Yeah. Uh, Chisler's Hall of Shame. Uh -huh. I don't have anything. Oh come on! I, I, I know I have something. something. I have something. Jeez. But um. Uh, well, yeah, you know what? I might as well. I don't have it written down. I wanted to come prepared, but um, uh, I'm going to do a Chisels Hall of Shame next time about retail industry in general and all the little ways they, they, the sleazy bastards scam me as a customer. And believe me, they there are many tricks up their sleeve. Uh, but I want to uh, discuss um, uh, alternative. Uh, fitness, which I am involved in, uh, circular or rotational training, which is swinging Indian clubs, uh, or a mace. I thought it was swinging Indians. No, swinging Indian clubs has uh, nothing to do with uh, sexuality. It has to do with exercise. And um, make sure this is hard hitting. It's got to be hard hitting. Yeah. Oh, it's hard hitting, all right. Yeah, there are people in not just circular training with the manufacturing of Indian clubs, but there are many companies, many people in the fitness industry in general that exploit the industry by um, making uh, products that uh, may not be up to par. Some of them are, many of them are not. Uh, shoddy workmanship it could be but well, they all have one thing in common they're uh, terribly overpriced rip-off prices and uh, once they make the sale and you have a, a problem a lot of them don't care typical corporate American customer service they don't really care they're usually fads they come and they go yeah right now now you know people there are there's no shortage of infomercials late at night and products come and go and you know uh, some of them they make a killing and then they fold up and you don't see the infomercial or the product again um, it's a bomb but they made their money now with the uh, uh, alternative uh, rotational training Indian clubs there are people out there wood turners who use the words handcrafted Art and the words artisan, they call themselves an artisan. Mm -hmm. Let's let me tell you something. A, a person, a wood turner making an Indian club, is no different than a furniture maker making a bedpost. You are not an artist. You are not an artisan. These people are charging several hundred dollars mm. for a pair of wooden clubs with handles on it. And they're calling themselves artisans, handcrafted. Mm -hmm. And uh, it turned out that myself and uh, Mr. Ken Thiessen, my friend Ken Thiessen, uh, former WWE star and personal trainer in Boca Raton, Florida, uh, we have discovered that um, the invention's been around for a while now, a long time. There are computerized lathes. Mm -hmm where you just uh, type in the dimensions, the template, you know, the measurements of the club or anything. Let's take a bedpost. And the machine before your eyes, within minutes, makes the product. So you are greatly uh, uh, increasing the supply versus the demand 
for your product. You don't have to keep a large inventory because the products are made so quickly with the computerized lathe. You have the labor factor that's not there anymore. You, so you just have the cost of wood. Uh, these people cry that wood is expensive, wood is scarce. Poppycock. Go to Home Depot. Go to Craigslist. You know how many articles are on Craigslist where people are saying, please come and take these logs off my hands for free. Uh -huh. Get, take this wood off my property. There, there are tons of free wood out there. So what I'm saying is it's all retail bullshit. Making it sound like the product is much more special and costly than it really is. Turning around, uh, charging you several hundred dollars, four or five hundred bucks for two hunks of wood. It's a ripoff, it's unethical. Yes, I believe, Ken believes, Ken Thiessen believes, and I think my radio partner believes that when you have that computerized lathe, um, uh, I'm sorry to disagree with you, Paul Walker Whiskey uh, of Perth, Australia, but when you have the lathe that's computerized, it does bring the so-called overhead way down mm -hmm. in several ways or a few ways at least and it does increase the supply versus the demand mm -hmm. demand the demand for Indian clubs is still low mm -hmm. because we are a small flock mm -hmm. like let's say somebody who's into uh, stamp collection or butterflies or you know or whatever some uh, miscellaneous hobby the flocks are small but getting down to ethical retail business practices the cost of wood in most of the world should not be a factor because any decent hardwood would make good Indian clubs. Uh, the cost of labor, labor is not a factor because you could purchase a used uh, top of the line, a good computerized lathe for $5,000, $10,000. You know, you can acquire one and uh, it'll pay for itself. So. You know, there's no reason to spend several hundred dollars uh, 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 on two pieces of wood. Now, there is a uh, another person from the United Kingdom that threatened myself uh -huh. and uh, Zay Ricardo with a lawsuit. But, right. I, but I never mention the man's name or his company. I only target the industry. Uh -huh. And he... I'm sorry, but you, you cannot censor opinions that are targeting an industry. Well, Monsanto and the other companies uh, 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 worldwide through these treaties and etc. That is exactly what they want to do. They want to censor opinions, right? Well, they don't want PETA and these other people running around showing how bad they are. You mean the mistreatment of livestock? Yes, that, that too. You're talking, to be, you're talking about you're talking about factory farming livestock? Yeah. Mm -hmm. As opposed to humane, organic, uh, free range livestock? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I would say uh, animals are the poor things. They, they, they uh, undergo, uh, they experience such cruelty before they get killed yeah. for human consumption. You know, yeah. they're drugged up and. And that's another, totally another episode, but, you know, what, what this is about is um, honest, uh, ethical business practices and doing the right thing if you're in business. Well, Just you know doing what? the right thing and, and not really, being a greedy, stingy bastard. You really can't do that unless you have regulation. Bingo! And... For the last 40, 50 years, we don't believe in that regulation. Well, the, the right wing doesn't believe in it. Yeah. But they and their supporters or whatever have made put these things into laws have did which are incumbent upon the rest of us. Have Republic did Republicans give FDR a hard time when he in installed these regulations? Of course! Back then? Okay. They have been 
ever since then they have been they have been to undo the the new deal at every turn oh what the uh, what do you think their attack on social security is the most successful government program of all time from social security. ever since ronald reagan i believe the republicans have been trying hard to undo fdr's new deal I mean, they've been trying well, hard. Well, you gave them a good start, I'll say that. Oh, yeah. First, the tax system, you know. But Mr. Nixon was not innocent. The tax uh, vacation on the rich. Okay. Uh, you know, um, but I like, um, two things I like is uh, Bernie Sanders saying, if you're an American company and you want to continue being an American company and selling your product in America, this, this this deal about you avoiding paying American income taxes to this country ain't going to happen if he gets in. Okay. Another thing is Pope Francis will be, he's in, I think he, he for the first time ever, I think he's um, doing a um, an event in Cuba. So I want to salute. Well, first time in a long time. I want to yeah. salute Pope Francis for doing this. All right, the only pope I ever liked, a, a true progressive, even though people attacked him because he is a pope of the Roman Catholic Church, not looking at the content of what Pope Francis says. Okay, I congratulate him for doing the uh, event in Cuba, and he will be coming to the United States. Now that douchebag from Fox News says, stay out of the United States. We are... We embrace capitalism here. That 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 fruit booty, mm -hmm. fuck face, douchebag face guy from Fox News, telling Pope Francis, "You're not welcome in the United mm -hmm. States." How dare you? You're how, a socialist. How dare you? And and he, he he of course he he plugged capitalism, which is really only rigged for the rich. Um, um, yeah. So what? Socialism. It's the only thing, the only system that will help the poor and the middle class. But how dare he tell Pope Francis not to come into the United States? You know, and, 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 and all these offensive and lying comments, they just go on and on unchallenged by anyone in the media. No one has the spine, no one has the intestinal fortitude to challenge them. Uh, uh, Pope Francis will be coming to the United States. I hope he meets with Bernie Sanders. I think it would be very, very cool if he attended a Bernie Sanders rally. Uh, some progressives were screaming about me saying that, saying that don't mix uh, a church and state. I said, I says, I'm not mixing church and state. I happen to agree with a lot of the political. Uh, comments and, and things and views that Pope Francis has. He has many progressive liberal views that are not uh, connected to Christianity. Well, they are, but they're no. He gets political, you know. But but uh, it's not political like um, the uh, right wing evangelicals are. You know, connected to money, making money. Uh, it has to do with compassion. For the poor and the little guy and the uh, you know working class, uh, Pope Francis has uh, has said everything positive and nothing uh, negative, really. So, you know, so uh, uh, I welcome his uh, what he has to say. And um, getting back to uh, the insanity of Kim Davis going on the by Mike Huckabee, you never see. I mean, the internet, progressive liberal internet media keeps on showing you what all these conservatives are, and, and religious nuts are saying. Um, they're getting way too much face time. They're, they should not be irrelevant. Mike Huckabee is a, a, a bottom feeder, bottom of the barrel loser in the campaign. Uh, Kim Davis is somebody who uh, is not doing her job, should be impeached. 
Uh, other people are not relevant. Michelle Bachman, Pat Robertson, Sarah Palin, and Bristol Palin. They've been displaying a lot of Bristol Palin comments. Who cares what she thinks and says? She is even less relevant than her mother. <coughs> so, on that note, uh, okay, next time I'll, I'll write down all the sneaky tactics that retail business does. And uh, let us sink our teeth into these readings on progressive discussions. Hope they're hard hitting. Oh, yeah. Oh. Five bells for hard hitting. Everything that you hear politically, I almost forgot this. Anything that you hear on this show is connected to our new series, ongoing series, Capitalism in a Conch Shell. Capitalism in a Conch Shell. There's the conch. And everything you idiots out there, you lemmings, have heard about trickle down economics and whatever is good for business is good for the country because it creates jobs and that whole Ronald Reagan bullshit never happened. It was a fantasy. It was a lie. There is no trickle down economics. It is not going to trickle down. Forget it. Uh, what you have is siphon up to the top 1% or 20% economics. Siphon up economics. There is no trickling down. That's a siphon. Done. Go ahead. Even though it is fashionable nowadays to be angry, I'm sick and tired of hearing about the angry Republican voters. Fashionable? There's so much to be angry about. I want to be fashionable, so I'll be angry too. Yeah. Actually, I feel more like incensed with the way Dr. Ben Carson oh, is depicted as the anti-Trump and gentle candidate. You mean the hypocrite who, who wants to end welfare and food stamps and uh, Pell Grants, but he took advantage of that when he was young. Well, he said... He grew up with that. that list. It, was, it was a good thing for the blacks to be brought over here to be slaves because they were introduced to Christianity. He's worse than an Uncle Tom. No kidding. He's justifying slavery for of his own people so they can be introduced to whose Christianity? Not the God of the Bible's Christianity. Maybe a, a evangelical cult. Give me a break. Oh, yeah. There is nothing gentle about Carson. Donald Trump's incendiary comments are lame compared with Carson's. Let's not forget, among his many other horrific comments, how he said the Affordable Care Act is the worst thing since slavery. Gee, where, where do poor people go when they get sick then? They don't go anywhere. They die. They die. So he's, he's just wishing, and then they don't have to care for so them. So he's just wishing the demise of the poor. Yeah. And the demise of the uh, our veterans that are that go that have been or in the Middle East. They yeah. don't want them coming back. No. Only in a body bag. Only in a body bag. See, Republicans are are not ashamed of. Uh, their agenda. They shove it in your face. They're very obvious. Yeah, and their supporters don't... They don't stop. They used, don't stop. I used to call the supporters of a Republican uh, pea brains. Now they have graduated to... They have downgraded to a split pea. <laughs> have you ever seen a split pea? Yeah. That's what they have for a brain. Well, isn't the mustard seed even smaller than that? I think apple? a split pea is even smaller than a lentil. Mustard seed, bre a chia seed is pretty tiny. Chia seed is small too. So is a sesame what... seed. No, sesame mustard, mustard seeds beat sesame. All right, well it's, then. Uh, mustard seed brain? 
Maybe they have mustard seed brains, you know. All right, let's call it mustard seed brain. It'll be biblical. And how he compared America and the Obama administration to Nazi Germany. I thought the uh, conservatism was closer to fascism than uh, well, let than, us not forget the, left. the actual definition of fascism. They have their definitions all mixed up. No kidding. But the closest economic system to totalitarianism is fascism. True. Because it has a dictator. And right. socialism and communism don't. And there's no need for a dictator. That's true. In those two. And this is this is the system that right wing conservatives embrace. Yes. The actual definition is the corporations married to the government. That is fact. So when they use the word Nazi, they're really referring to themselves, their their agenda, not no, I mean, I mean, Barack Obama, considering that racism has caused uh, the Congress to obstruct and block everything he ever wanted to do, considering that fact, the man did a, a, a fantastic job in two terms. I think he, I, I don't know how true this is, but did he undo the G.W. Bush we're yes. pretty close to it. It is down from one point four trillion dollars to four hundred and some billion. And this is with the obstruction from the yeah. Republican Congress. Yeah. Can you imagine if 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 the Republican Congress wasn't racist and they actually did uh, 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 engage in bipartisanship? and had a jobs program. I mean, there have been jobs increases through all the months since, uh, what, two, two, maybe 2007, 2008, whatever. Yeah. Okay? But they're not enough because of the obstruction. Yeah. Well, okay. Obamacare is a bipartisanship compromise because it, it, it is still privatized. And yeah. they don't even and want that's the problem, isn't it? And they don't even want that. They really do not want poor people to be able to get help at all. The no. Republicans at all, nothing's. They don't care what it is. It just, the the poor child is worthless to them. But that fertilized egg or the embryo is extremely valuable to the Republicans. Oh, they love that fertilized egg which is not a human baby. But if you're a poor kid, if you are if you come out of the womb and the doctor smacks you on the ass and you start crying and, 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 you, and you're poor, forget it. They, as soon as you do that, Republicans do not care about you. When called out about his statements, he sprouts, spouts, his gobbledygook, explanation of how his words were misinterpreted and then proceeds to clarify his comments in a highbrow condescending manner sure. if ever there was a pretentious counterfeit candidate it is he Carson's campaign manager Barry Bennett proudly states that Carson memorized every nerve in the body. So? So, he can memorize the top 12 terrorists in the world. Okay. Very good. As if that is the only precursor to becoming President of the United States. I'm sure he memorized uh, 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 all the ways that uh, the uh, we the people can get screwed over by uh, by the corporate oligarch. I'm sure he, he's aware of that too. 
I'm positive that Carson is one of the finest doctors in the country. However, presidential material, he is not. Hey, if you had, if the best chef in the world had a, had a cooking show on TV, and uh, their cooking is awesome, but they're a douchebag in real life and a Republican, just because they're the best chef, that doesn't mean I should vote for them. The second Same Republican deal. presidential debate was a horror show. <laughs> hey, better for Bernie. <laughs> the debate format with 11 candidates was awful. Instead of eliciting responses from all the candidates on issues, such as the size and scope of the federal budget, the overbearing regulatory state, protecting the American people's civil liberties, and the Federal Reserve, the questioners thought they were doing the viewers a favor by trying to get the candidates to debate personal attacks and other inconsequential statements they have made about each other. Incredibly, there was no discussion of the 200 and twenty trillion dollar unfunded liabilities of the federal government. But what was most troubling aspect of the candidates' responses was that virtually all the candidates were in favor of confrontation with our Russia, with Iran, with the China, with Syria, and others. Or, in other words, any country that stands up to the United States Empire. I'm glad you said that. The Empire. That's exactly what it is. Because any country outside of the United States is really none of the United States' damn business. You know, as, uh, as far as the government goes, you know. Virtually all of the GOP candidates want to lead the world. What nonsense. Our government cannot go around the world trying to remake nations in the political elite's image. Carly Farina stood out for her. Horse face Fiorina. <laughs> for her hawkish views. Hawkish views and, and, a hawk and a horse face. She made several outlandish statements. But the one that was over the top is that our military is underfunded. Is she serious? It takes 57% of the budget. Uh, underfunded. But, but, but Planned Parenthood is, is overfunded. But the military is underfunded. Yeah. But all the waste in the military, that would take care of all the homeless and all the poor. Yeah. And all the money going to private contractors and, 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 to to laundry, the launder the uh, uh, soldiers a duffel bag of clothes for a hundred dollars. I want to go back to the days before stupid Cheney. When, uh, if, if you did something wrong, you got uh, to clean the latrine with a toothbrush. Maybe you got KP duty. Punished you. Well, I don't think KP is, a, you know, a punishment per se. But I'm, what I'm saying is, you know, that stuff. The soldiers should be doing their own work. You know what I mean? Yeah, why? What's what? Well, I, 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 I kind of know what it's about. I mean, it's... All this um, privatization is uh, is just a a crony uh, uh, a gift from the from the Republicans to the people that pay them off. Exactly. It's cronyism. Exactly. Exactly. The United States spends more on the military than all the major nations in the world combined. <sighs> Right. And Jeb Bush gets the Pinocchio Award for asserting that his brother 
President George W. Bush kept America safe. Sure he did. I believe that uh, 911 occurred on G.W. Bush's watch. And all the controversy that went with that uh, unjust war, you know, and not just G.W. Bush, Cheney too. He's a bigger culprit. I mean, G.W. is just a dummy. Well, Cheney was the acting president. Yeah, G.W. Bush is just a puppet. Right. You know, you could see he's very puppet-like. He's not, he's not very bright. Currently, virtually all the presidential candidates from both major parties are offering the American people more of the same. An entrenched welfare, warfare state. Continuous war for profit. Continuous. I don't know. I haven't heard Bernie say anything like that. No, no. Um, um, I don't know. There was a banner. I'm sure it was propaganda from from the right wing. Uh, there was a banner that said that uh, Bernie Sanders, who wants the minimum wage to be $15 an hour, pays his interns only $12 an hour. Something like that. Some nitpicky little shit like that. I don't know. Well, we don't know, do we? No, I don't. I don't know why interns are being paid at all. In most cases, interns are yeah. are not paid at all. Correct. Across the board. Correct. I never heard of an intern having a salary. That's correct. I mean, this is the first time I'm hearing it. So that's why I say nitpicky. Or it might be re propaganda. Or it could be uh, b bullshit. Maybe he treats them better than $12 an hour. If you're a snot-nosed college kid and you want to gain experience as an intern and normally you, you don't get any money and somebody throws you $12 an hour, I think that's a pretty good deal for some uh, 18 or 21 year old. Uh, to a to a uh, situation that should be volunteer, right? It's usually volunteer. Yeah. The yeah. only ones that are paid, as far as I know, are the the staff. The staff. I think the staff of the major charities should be volunteer. I I I think it's despicable that the a charity should have a CEO getting a million dollars plus a year. Did you hear what happened to uh, Trumpy? What? The other day when he was on the ship. He was on the ship? Yeah, that uh, organization, that veterans organization oh. that invited him yeah. to be on the ship and make the thing. They turned out to be not a, uh, not a charity. So at all. He just called it a charity. Yeah. Oh, what now, a what sneaky rascal. what about the money that they got for theoretically being a charity? Donald Trump is is an is a perfect example of the bible verse that says he who makes haste to be rich shall not be innocent <laughs> he, he's a perfect example of that oh my gosh fraud 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 if it's not hypocrisy with republicans it's fraud speaking of trump republican presidential front runner donald trump declined Thursday to correct a questioner at a town hall event who incorrectly stated that President Obama is Muslim and said he'd be looking at claims of terrorist training camps on American soil. You know what? I have to ring the levity bells. It's that one. Trump. Oh, man who has a history of making controversial remarks about immigrants and other groups was kicking off a town hall event. His first since Wednesday evening's second Republican primary debate. They don't mind white European immigrants, by the way. Republicans never say anything about them. Only immigrants of color. Possibly they bring money with them. Oh, if you come here with Moolah, uh, the big mamu, Oh, they won't say anything about you. Yeah. We have a problem in this country. Big man move. It's called Muslims. Oh, here we go, scapegoating. 
said the first man Trump called on to ask a question. We know our, cur our current president is one. You know he's not even an American. Oh dear. Trump, who was a driver of the birther movement that claimed Obama wasn't born in the United States, Ugh. first responded with feigned exasperation. How do we know it was feigned? I mean, as far as I'm concerned, he mocked the guy, which was good. When he said, you know, he put out his both hands and he, he laughed and he said, we need this, we need this question. But the whole birth It was sarcasm. The whole birth People in the United States don't dig sarcasm. They don't get it. No, just like that, there, there's a new uh, Walmart sign that is going to be going up uh, in the express lane. Um, um, Fifteen customers or less, and it says, this is what 15 looks like, and it has three yellow hands. Three yellow hands. Five, five, and five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then on the bottom it says, our society is in big trouble. If you have to look, if you need three hands to show you what 15 looks like. Oh man, they just don't, this whole thing about the birther issue, they just don't like the black man in the White House. They just don't want to come clean on that. That's true. You know? <clears throat> we need the question, Trump said, to yeah. laughs. But he let the man continue. Quote, we have training camps growing where they want to kill us. That's my question. When can we get rid of it? <laughs> Go find it. Trump did not dispute the man's assertions and said he'd heard others raise the issue. We're going to be looking at a lot of different things. And you know, a lot of people are saying that. And a lot of people are saying that bad things are happening out there. A lot of paranoia going on, Dr. Trump. Bill. We're going to be looking at that and plenty of other things. The incident evoked a, mom a moment during the 2008 campaign when Republican nominee John McCain took the microphone away from a woman who said she didn't trust Obama because he was an Arab. Oh gee, besides being uh, not liking him because he's black now, he's an Arab. Trump's questions about the president's country of birth helped build his stature among some conservative voters. The questions also pushed Obama to release a copy of his birth certificate in 2011. But the billionaire businessman has distanced himself from the issue during his current run. And that's exactly what Donald Trump is, no more, no more, no less, a multi-billionaire businessman. Let's make a deal. Let's make a deal. Let's make a deal. He Come on down. He's the master of the deal, or the art of the deal. Well, he wrote the book on it. Yeah, that's what he knows. Um, I just uh, we're gonna break for well, we lunch. We'll get or... one more done here. Okay, and then I wanna I wanna say something that's sad, but uh oh. Yeah, but I have to do it. Um, All I right. I want to do it. Yeah. Still on Trump. Yeah. I had to toss the paper after reading the column by editorial page editor Alfred P. Dolan, Doblin, Doblin, accusing Donald Trump of splashing his name on buildings like a skunk sprays an unsuspecting bystander. Yeah, or, or a tiger, a big cat, a Marxist territory. It's on his airplane, too. I'm surprised his, his mug is not on his plane. <laughs> You know, with that triple hair, which looks like a triple. I saw the Star Trek banner of William Shatner holding the tribbles and then had Donald Trump's head on the bottom. Yeah, a bunch of tribbles. Yeah, triple head. Doblin's column was more befitting a tabloid than the record, which is our local newspaper. Doblin demonstrates his apparent lack 
of understanding of politics today. His seeming hatred of Donald Trump is palpable. Trump did not label himself front runner. He earned that position by being able to articulate a platform that the electorate relates to and supports. If any of the other candidates did the same, they would be the front runner. The other candidates, by their sniping and efforts to remove Trump from the race, are proving to be sore losers. Do they honestly believe by trying to destroy Trump, all of Trump's supporters are going to rally around them? Unless those candidates can articulate a winning platform, it will be impossible for them to win over Trump supporters. Doblin's incendiary comments about Trump demonstrate a total disrespect for all those people who have awarded him the front-runner position. Does Doblin not understand that the people support the candidate of their choice and not the one of the establishment that the establishment anoints? Yeah. Well, I just want to announce that uh, I was happy to see that uh, about 130 celebrities and um, entertainers, famous entertainers, uh, showed up at a, at a rally in support of Bernie Sanders. Yeah, Bernie! Uh, Will Ferrell. Feel the bird. One of them, uh, I think of Red Hot Chili Peppers, the rock, rock groups, of musicians, actors, Danny DeVito. Many people showed up which uh, to support, support Bernie Sanders, not Hillary Clinton. Oh, uh, that video over an hour long about a, another expose of Hillary Clinton. I don't know if you caught it before. It you... would not play for me last night. Play for me. It's a YouTube. It did not play for me. It's a YouTube video over an hour long. Um, um, anyway, I just want to have a moment of silence. Uh, one of my uh, Facebook group administrators, Mr. Randy King, uh, prematurely. Um, passed away. He died uh, um, uh, a few days ago or a couple days ago. Um, he was only 52 years old. Oh my God. He died from an accident. Oh. He, he um, now this is sad. He, um, he died from, uh, um, uh, in his sleep. He died in his sleep from uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. And, um, uh, you know, here's a guy that was very nice to me. Very, he's a gentleman. He was very friendly, um, and um, he. Um, I mean, just think about it. You go to bed feeling fine, thinking that you're going to wake up like you normally do every day, and you don't wake up. Where did the common carbon monoxide come from? Guess what? His county in California. I found out that it is not mandatory to have a carbon monoxide detector like it is here in New Jersey. A smoke detector, yes, but not a carbon monoxide detector. Are you listening, people? The message I'm giving you what happens? It, you know what? Buy it. Even though you're living somewhere where it's not mandatory by the fire marshal, whatever, buy it. Get it immediately. Man's only 52 years old, very nice man, dies unnecessarily. Well, where did he come from? I, I have to find out oh, okay. where, uh, if it came from the house, we can... Because uh, in California, it's obviously not from the heater. But a lot of people today... No, no, it gets cold in Northern California. A lot of people so, today Northern California. have the, uh, the uh, ignition button on their car where they press it. Yeah. No key. And what happens Wonderful. to a lot of people that have been carbon monoxide is the car they pull into the garage and they don't shut the ignition off. The car is running. In the garage. In the garage. Which goes into the house. Goes into the house. Holy shit. So many people, so several people have died that way. So I'm oh, There's a big juicy lawsuit against the auto manufacturer. 
you kidding me uh, you, uh -huh. you get you get some um, personal injury law firm that's famous Jacoby and Myers or whatever uh, they, they got forget it they got teeth like like me like a piranha fish they'll sink their teeth right in there man but it doesn't bring back the lives uh, tragically it does not bring back the lives uh, if you get really hurt bad if you get maimed it, it you know what if you have to live in pain all the time and and be in a wheelchair it, it, is money really <laughs> is your lawsuit re really gonna change that no it's not unfortunately not okay I want to have a moment of silence for um, Randy Davis I mean sorry Randy King mm. Randy King that ugly freak Kim Davis man you see she made me She's say Davis. on your mind she made me say Davis oh, Randy oh boy. Randy because she's still belligerent and non-compliant Randy Davis moment of silence uh, Randy but King I mean oh my god get this woman off your head no it's not that it's that I didn't get sleep last night man I went I didn't get to sleep till 4 a.m. I'm tired I'm tired Randy King, 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 King. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moment of silence, but what I, what I have to say is uh, really infuriating and very sad. Aside from Randy King passing away unnecessarily, Randy King is still in the morgue because his uh, family and relatives right now are fighting over his possessions. Oh boy. They're fighting over his personal possessions, not thinking about giving the poor man his funeral. Mm -hmm. Shame on you. This is shows you how vile today's human beings are in the end times. It shows you how how materialism. Mm -hmm. I, I blame the capitalist system of the United States for for helping people become like this, but I the material, the materialistic obsession with people. They, they totally forgot about the poor man dying at age 52 unnecessarily. Uh, Randy King. No, nah, they want to liquidate his assets. They want to, they're fighting amongst each other over his personal belongings. Nice. Yeah, so that's how it is. But anyway, moment of silence, and then we're going to go to lunch. Poor Randy King, man. Rest in peace. Um, um, all right, we're gonna go to lunch, uh, uh, and um, uh, you'll be you'll be joined by um, um, how to defeat a conservative Bible quotes. Just simply hit the pause button, read and learn, and followed by our voiceover artist William Hamilton Morrow the Third with promo and and his words of wisdom. So we'll see you. Hey, hey. See you when we get back. Words of wisdom. It is, um, yeah, the middle of September, 2015. How about that? How the months and seasons fly by. Uh, Incredible.
this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye. Okay, we are back. Thank you very much, William Hamilton Morrow III, for your promo and words of wisdom. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> The bell shall toll for the second half of this show. Uh, how many? Twelve? Twelve! Thirteen? No, thirteen's unlucky. Baker's seven dozen. is complete. A baker's dozen is thirteen. Seven is complete. Yeah, but I do seven when I'm when, when I'm impressed. Got twelve. This is like the. Uh, the, ha the halftime, like a halftime at a, at a at a football game. It is now time for the second half of progressive discussions. I guess that's my cue. Yeah. I guess that's my cue. We will sink our piranha teeth back into the show. One must ask, doth thou protest too much? By going back to our forefathers, they certainly made it difficult to vote. As you could only vote if you were a wealthy white landowner. Fast forward to the 15th Amendment in 1870, which supposedly allowed people of color to vote regardless of their race or previous condition of servitude. Staying on the fast track, women could finally vote after the 19th Amendment passed in 1920. And only in 1964 did the 24th Amendment bar forced poll taxes on voters in federal elections. So when our, our founding father says all men are created equal, he meant rich white men. Correct. Because if all these people didn't get their civil rights Correct. until decades. And that's exactly what the right wing Republican Party Later. mean when they say all men are created equal. White and rich. There you go. Can't be white and poor because then no. you, then you'll need public assistance. Oh God forbid! Then you'll need you'll need help. Help me. Coupled with more than 100 years of Jim Crow laws and prevalent attitudes in parts of our country of keeping certain people or classes from voting, that really did make it difficult to vote. I know I'm plugging the company. It's a good company. I have no problem with it. Okay. I get all my nuts there. Well, we're talking about real healthy nuts, not not the ones in and the, in the Republican Party. And they deliver in two days. That's not bad. No. Oh, that's. Uh, They're in Edison, New Jersey. U.S. Uh, Post Office uh, Priority Mail. Two, uh, two, yeah, a laser ship, I believe it's called. Two day, two days is USPS uh, uh, priority. It's only six dollars or something. Mm. UPS is like eight dollars or something. Screw them. FedEx eight dollars or something. Privatized crooks. With the recent Supreme Court decision gutting a large part of the Voting Rights Act of 1965 and the push 
for highly restrictive voting ID laws across our country designed to suppress voter turnout, the trend to make voting harder continues. Is there a pattern here? <laughs> the writer even makes it a partisan issue by bringing in supposed democratic advantage if the New Jersey Democracy Act was passed. Whether columnist Bridget Harrison is a liberal doesn't really matter, as the writer's agenda is clearly conservative. So who is to say who is correct? Well, no one should be allowed to cheat in any election. Every citizen should have the right to vote without being harassed or forced to run through an endless marathon of steps and paperwork. Right. But the important thing is to vote. If you don't vote, your opinion means nothing. Political parties and individuals should be elected on their platforms and policies, not by how many people they keep from voting. You know, it's, it's amazing that... Whoop. I mean, one of the hallmarks of an advanced, civilized society is um, its science and its, its reverence, its respect for science and proven facts. Uh. This is the first time, this time in, in our nation, nation's history or the history of the world, I mean, it, it, it reminds me of the days when they oppressed science. Like back in the in the uh, Middle Ages. Well, what the hell do you call the Republicans not wanting the EPA to influence any decisions from Washington? Or the, DC? What about the climate change deniers? And the climate change deniers. That is oppressing science, is it not? Not being interested in listening to our scientists at all, the Republican Party. Yeah, because maybe they they they, part, they are afraid that the scientists, who are nine times out of no, they're a hundred percent progressive liberal. I have never in my life listened to a scientist that was worth his, his or her salt that was a moderate or a conservative. They are all have progressive views on everything. So they don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear the truth versus their lies. No, they want to go on with their perceptions. Their fantasies. Because their perceptions and fantasies mean that they could they could finagle their way into making more money by 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 screwing everyone else over and get away with it. I mean, just imagine what would happen tomorrow to the Republican Party and its base and etc. If one of their great ideas were absolutely, totally proven wrong. Well, I could end the party. I could prove. I could prove one of their great ideas very wrong, and that's the idea of. Um, the job creators in trickle-down economics. Yeah, but their perception goes on. You got the corporations outsourcing the jobs. All right, so where's the trickling? Where's it happening? In China, that's where the job production is going on. That's what they mean by trickle. Yeah. They didn't say. So the disclaimer is like trickle-down economics, but just not in the U.S. There you go. Okay. But they and because of deregulation, of course, we have no laws upon that. Now, Mr. Trumpy says that uh, I don't particularly care for this idea because this is still allowing them to do what they want to do. He says, okay, you want to go to my, uh, Ford? You want to go to Mexico and, and build a big factory there and produce mm -hmm. your cars? You have to pay a 35% uh, 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 tariff when you come back with the car to bring it into the U.S. No, no, no. You don't even allow them to go to Mexico. No, it's kind of 
kind of traitorous when you think about it. That's Un correct. Unpatriotic. Well, what do you think it's traitorous with them keeping those trillions of dollars offshore so they don't have to bring it back in and pay taxes? What do you call that? Huh? But if you did that as an individual, you'd be spending time in the hooskow, wouldn't you? You notice that conservatives do not want the existence of the IRS. They want a consumption. Oh, yeah. They only, they only want a consumption tax. And they, guess who pays the consumption tax? They know the consumption tax is, is will be paid by the true consumers, which are not the rich. Yeah. How many goddamn refrigerators can the rich buy? Eh? We buy a lot, don't we? So we'll be paying more consumption taxes than they will. Bingo! Even if they're paying a whopping consumption tax on their private jet, still. They're only buying one. Throughout the lifetime of the rich person, versus the amount of middle class and poor people that are constantly spending, putting money back into the economy, which is why the best way to stimulate the American economy is to put more money back into the pockets of the little guys. The only way. Oh, we can't pay fifteen dollars minimum wage. That's Main we Street. We can't do that. Not Wall Street. Main Street. Well, you know what? Fifteen dollars an hour is still below the cost of living. Oh yeah. But uh, uh, Denmark does that, doesn't it? Listen, Denmark. If fifteen dollars is still below the what you call it, then what the hell it was seven twenty-five. McDonald's employees in Denmark started over twenty dollars an hour right. with benefits, with the pay, uh, paid uh, uh, paternity, maternity leave, and um, and uh, uh, paid vacation, whatever. All right, now the price of a of a Big Mac in Denmark is only like they said it's only like fifty five cents more than the Big Mac is yeah. in the United States. It's all a bunch of bullshit. Right. So That's that, what it all amounts to. No. This protection of business. This protection of the big corporations. I'm trying to think of what what dastardly thing that Nestle's did recently. It'll come to me. But anyway, continue. Her strong performance at the second Republican presidential debate has put a new spotlight on former Hewlett Packard chief executive Carly Fiorina's long shot bid for the 2016 nomination. Horse face Fiorina. I am Mr. Ed. <laughs> you know, as much, as much as she disgusts me, if I use a caricature of Carly Fiorina for the front cover of this week's show, but well, I already have another funny Donald Trump one. So it depends on how who we talk about most often. Whether she can turn buzz into momentum, however, brings hinges, excuse me, on overcoming a set of substantive and logistical challenges. <laughs> Until now, for the arena. And she sounds like that, that, that cereal. That, that, Farina? Farina. People no, will have to call her that. No, people will not buy Farina if her face was on the box. That's for sure. Stick to the baby. She has been running near the back of the pack, essentially living off the land as she campaigns in the early voting states. One question ahead is whether she can quickly build a top-tier organization to go with her new status as a... I could have been a contender. I could have been a contender. She has absolutely no qualities at all. I mean, not even for the business world. They don't like her. Another is how well her corporate record will stand up once voters start examining it more closely. I went into this debate understanding that half the people watching had never heard my name. 
I didn't never, know I was running for president. I never knew she existed. That shows you how, how little I care about the corporate world. She said on Thursday on MSNBC's Morning Joe. And so it was a really important opportunity for me to continue to introduce myself to the American people. I was satisfied that I said what I needed to say last night. The day after reviews from the conservative commentariat were ecstatic. Time and time again, Carly Fiorina showed she could hold up against the rest. It was a very real introduction to the nation as a legitimate contender. Sure she can hold up against the rest. When they look at her, they turn to stone. That was Medusa, wasn't it? Yeah, well, Fiorina. I think she can do it, too. She, I tell you, she makes Aunt Coulter look like Kim Kardashian. Or, or uh, Jessica Alba. The big question now is not whether Carly polling goes up, but from whom does she take votes? Fiorina may also be part of the answer to the GOP's difficulties in appealing to female voters. The party is looking for a nominee who can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Fiorina deflated frontrunner Donald Trump something no other Republican contender has managed to do to the bombastic billionaire. Huh? Well, I don't know how the, Trump. I don't know how the hell she did that. Trump is a that. sharp cookie, man. He, he I watched would, the whole goddamn debate. He would tear Fiorina a new asshole. I don't see her deflating Donald Trump. No way, no how. You know, something that struck me the other day after the debate. I, I, I'll bet you. I'll bet you there was a rush to the bathrooms after that debate from holding their piss for three hours. <laughs> Wait a minute. You mean to tell me they had to stand there for three hours? Yep. They didn't have any jugs for them to I guess not. Into? Come on. Now, what's the deal with uh, Scott Walker being told to turn his back to the audience? I didn't see that. Why did he do that? Well, this put the, we I know that him and Trump had some words. Yeah, and when I went to play it, the user removed the video. See? User has removed the video. Every time, every time there is uh, something big happens where a Republican is embarrassed. <laughs> now, in this case, Scott Walker, he might be a big-time coke sucker. It was taken off. It was taken off the internet. Ask about disparaging comments he had made about her face. She replied, I think women all over this country heard very clearly what Mr. Trump said. For once, Trump seemed taken aback. He tried to overwrite one comment about Fiorina's appearance with another one. I think she's got a beautiful face. It's I being, think she's a beautiful woman. He's being sarcastic. Carly Fiorina, if she can look that bad with tons of makeup on, could you imagine <laughs> what she looks like without makeup? With the attention that Fiorina is now getting, however, there is certain to come new scrutiny. Much of it will center on her record at Hewlett Packard. After achieving acclaim in 1999 for being the first woman to head one of the nation's 20 largest corporations, Fiorina was fired in 2005. So how does a person with this bad of a track record in the business world 
You hide what, it. What possesses them to think and want to spend this much money on a presidential campaign? Because you say it all the time. They got a lot of skeletons in their closet. Yeah, they do. So if you have a lot of skeletons in your closet, why would you want to spend all that money campaigning for president? Because they're very good spinners. You gotta be okay. you gotta be pretty slick to hide that many skeletons. They do it well. But but the skeletons, Doctor Bill, are not difficult to uh, unearth. To unearth. Uh -huh. Well, if they're in the closet, they fall. Are not if difficult. You open the door. To, uh, to just simply open the door if you have that many skeletons. The arena. <laughs> the uh, arena. Uh, <laughs> the arena got a taste of that new scrutiny before the debate had even ended on Wednesday night when her business record came under attack during the event. There was a spike in Google searches for Carly Fiorina fired. Carly Fiorina, Carly Fiorina fired. Why? Fact checkers quickly challenged her familiar assertions that under her leadership, Hewlett Packard doubled the size of the company. We quadrupled its top line growth rate. We quadrupled the cash flow. We tripled its rate of innovation. Why'd you get canned then? The main force driving the higher numbers was Fiorina's decision in 2001 to merge Hewlett Packard with the rival company Compaq. She's making a big mistake trying to debate, fight with Donald Trump, I'm telling you right now. It was a controversial move one that Dell founder Michael Dell dubbed the dumbest deal of the decade. Dell dubbed the dumbest deal. Yeah, I like that. And like helped it. lead to her ouster. <clears throat> there are also certain to be reminders of the 30,000 layoffs that occurred at HP on her watch. But none of this comes as a surprise to Fiorina, who clearly has been preparing for the onslaught and faced similar fire when she ran unsuccessfully for the U.S. Senate in 2010 against incumbent Barbara Boxer, Democrat, California. She's another sharp cookie, Barbara Boxer. She's good, I mean. During the debate, Trump taunted her. I only say this, she can't run any of my companies. I'll tell you one thing, if Bernie gets in, uh, Barbara Boxer should have a place in his administration. She's one, she's one of the heavy hitters in the Democratic Party, right? Her rejoinder was to bring up the four times that Trump's companies filed for bankruptcy. You ran up mounds of debt, as well as losses using other people's money. No, that's what, that's what, what they, they do. That's what they do best. Another question that will arise is how well Fiorina can capitalize on her expected boosts in the polls in fundraising. Thus far, Republican operatives say she has almost no organization on the ground in the early voting state. Fiorina and uh, Carly Fiorina and Kim Davis are the greatest walking advertisements to birth control. If you want to talk about Planned Parenthood, just hand out eight by ten photos of uh, Carly uh, Fiorina to hang on your bedroom wall, and you'll refrain from sex. We are reaching a critical point for organization. It will take significant infrastructure to win the early states said Matt Moore, chairman of the South Carolina Republican Party. Oh, God. By Thanksgiving, if organization is not ready, 
you stand a real risk of not being able to capitalize on momentum. Those are the, those are the uh, Carolina Republicans that, 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 that love to throw the homeless in a in, 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 in privatized prison so they can work as slaves. Cool, they call man. them vagrants, right? Vagrants. Cool, man. It's, if you're poor and you're homeless, you're, you're, you're a criminal because you're called a vagrant. Vagrancy, and then they throw you in a privatized prison. Like it's your fault that you know you don't have a well, it pot is. to you're piss. You're lazy. You're lazy. There are 97 million people in America today. I'm going to sneeze. That are jobless. That's jobless. <coughs> jobless. They would like to work, but there ain't any. Jobs. Even people, even unemployed people, with outstanding resumes. That's correct. And with with a good solid background, with experience and degrees. The so jobs are elsewhere. They're elsewhere. Yeah, it's like it's so like. What do you expect? <clears throat> it's the like the day is coming when we run out of jobs if we're moving all the goddamn manufacturing overseas and into Mexico you know Ronald Reagan's hometown I forget the name of it it had one business there a big business once the business went out of town guess what happened to the town uh, uh, Bonzo became the mayor that time for Bonzo well I don't mean Reagan I'm talking about the, the town. town itself it became a ghost town? That's correct. People live there, but is, it is a ghost But isn't that what happened to all the old mining towns? Yes, exactly. From the wild, wild west? Exactly. They became ghost towns. Exactly. It's the same thing that happens if a Walmart moves into your stupid town and puts all the Main Street little bomb the pop businesses out of business. Look at And then guess what? what? Walmart goes out of business. Look at Detroit. Detroit. Looks so like, looks like a, a, a city that has been bombed, pretty much, right? Looks like the, Pal the Palestinians over there in yeah. Gaza. Did you see that video of the destruction that Israel did to the Palestinians? There ain't a house standing. But they bombed the shit out of them? Bombed the shit out of everything. It looks like a moonscape. There's not one house that's standing. And all those houses are made of concrete. I mean, believe me, I can't stand the right-wing Benjamin Netanyahu. I don't want to condemn all the people of Israel. I want to condemn the Netanyahu right-wing scumbag administration. And uh, but it doesn't help when you know. Well, you do, you hear stories that the Palestinians were using human shields, the children and the babies. Uh, Stuff like that. You know what? It's hey, very. We're not putting blame. There, there's enough blame to go around. It's, it's, what I'm saying. It's very is, complex. What I'm it's saying is situation. Israel's weaponry is 18 million times that of the Palestinians. So why That's are they being point. such bullies? <laughs> because they're right. Because they can. Because they're Net Netanyahu's a right wing. Yeah. Conservative bastards, and because that's what can. that's what conservatives do. They want to. They want an empire. They want to. They want to uh, uh, conquer you and occupy you by extortion and force and uh, you know um, stuff like that. Like uh, the European colonists, like uh, England and Spain, did to the New World, the indigenous people. You know. Uh, um, you know the uh, uh, former. Um, well, he's a pro wrestling star from WCW. He's known as Crowbar. His name Crowbar. Is, his name is yeah. He was on WCW. His name Never is Chris heard. Ford. He has a per, um, physical therapy uh, uh, clinic uh, center of his own. A uh, very intelligent man. Um, he's from New Jersey. Really? He was. He said to me about being for Bernie Sanders and, and, and democratic socialism. He says the problem with socialism is that a country will eventually run out of money and become like Greece. How do you run out of money if you're taxing? 
Yeah. That's you what I'm saying. You never out of money. So he did mention that as a middle class uh, uh, entrepreneur, a middle class businessman, he did talk about the unfair taxation, the taxes that he has to pay. See, this is the problem. Your middle class small business owners are not blaming their plight on the right people. Correct. The reason why you're being strangled with taxes and which includes your high property taxes across the board and income taxes is because the Republicans, Ronald Reagan, uh, uh, changed the system where the rich don't pay and you pay. Exactly. So They broaden the base, but baby. They're blaming the progressive liberals, mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. blaming socialism, mm -hmm. they're blaming the left, they're not blaming the right wing, which wing the rich not to pay and making the small businessman who is middle class make it up make it up Thank you. and that's 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 what I was trying to say but you know it's uh, uh, when when somebody is like I was trying to tell um, the peacemaker a pro wrestler about Pope um, Francis I says I know I realize you hate organized religion. I uh -huh. do. Too. I do too. I realize you're not a fan of the Roman Catholic Church. Uh -huh. I'm not a fan. I've never been a fan of it either. Uh, I know, for, for, and for good reason. But I'm not looking at Pope Francis as, oh, well, I have to kiss his ass uh, and kiss his ring because as he's a of Christ, because you mean? he's the Pope. No, uh, okay. I respect and love the man for his progressive liberal views policies, yes. for his political policies yes, yes. they're very pro liberal and progressive they're yes. very compassionate yes. for the poor and the and the working the middle class that's yes. all yes. I respect the man's views and you gotta sometimes you gotta look at the content of the human being and not other things House Speaker John Boehner Republican of Ohio. Yeah, we don't hear too much of John Boehner, uh, Boner, or whatever. Is bracing for what could be a big cry. The toughest weeks of his speakership. Oh, he's going to be crying big time. As several dozen conservatives in his party are threatening to topple him unless he is more ferocious with Democrats. He is not ferocious enough. During the upcoming fiscal showdown, well, he's a very laid-back man. I, he cries, but he's very—he's soft-spoken. He's—he's very laid-back. They want him to be uh, more of an asshole, like they are. Yeah, they want him to be more like a Ted Cruz. Ted okay. Cruz with the, the squinty eyes, like he's gonna take a shit, and his hands are up in the air. Oh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Christian. I'm a real Christian. You know, like like Kim Davis. That internal Republican feud has increased the chances that Washington, for the second time in two years, could stumble into a shutdown of the federal government. For the second time, right? Yeah, Ted Cruz shut it down last year, or whenever it was, two years ago. Yeah. Well, it looks like you yeah, have an old, ugly turtle face. Uh, he, he was in on it, too. We lost 24-some billion dollars during that time period. You mean for spite? They're doing this for yes. spite. They're doing it to get their way. They want to defund Planned Parenthood. They they, they want to they want to put they want to damage the United States as you a country bingo! over a stupid, crazy, religious nut morality issue like like pr pregnancy and abortions, just to get their way to get their way which and their way is in this case their way is the unborn child I mean I'm sorry not child not a child not no. child the uh, the fertilized egg or the embryo is more yeah. important than the the, uh, the the baby already born and and more important than the United States of America absolutely so because of this lunacy this uh, this zealot uh, crazy uh, evangelical lunacy. Mm -hmm. They want to put the country at risk. Absolutely. Interesting. Absolutely. Interesting. That's their 
leverage. Well, I hope Barack Obama, uh, uh, he has nothing to lose. I mean, I mean, he's just biding time till he, he gets, he leaves, but he could very easily expose their ass. Well, they exposed it the last time they did it. They, they got the blame for it and everything, and they're still going to do it again. Well, uh, it's I the supporters, my friend, the stupid supporters. Listen, supporters. You stupid split pea brain, mustard seed, no mustard seed brain, retarded. Oh, I shouldn't. I can't say retarded no more. Uh, 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 brain cell deficient, inbred, stupid evangelical jerk offs, a fertilized egg, and an embryo is not a human baby. Get that through your thick skulls. It is not. And you are a hypocrite for not caring for the baby already born. That's all. Continue. The Speaker's lieutenants are openly girding the for battle with the small but influential block of anti-Boehner conservatives who have signaled that if Boehner cuts any deal that they don't like with the Democrats and President Obama they could seek to remove him from the speaker's post. Oh, they're threatening to get rid of him if he doesn't uh, step Total up. Line, baby. Total line, baby. Total line, the uh, the Republican line. It is a threat that Boehner and his allies are taking very seriously. You know, John Boehner might be pushed and pushed, and if you piss him off enough, he might be pushed to, like, jump ship. That'll be the day. Uh, you How many Republicans have you ever seen turned to Democrat? Oh, you think you think he's just going to comply with them? David even, Brock is even, one. But even though they're threat, even though they're threatening him, you think? Absolutely, he's, he'll calto. Well, then he's got no balls. Exactly. He's got no coolions, man. Exactly. Now, do you see the? the Not like James P. Madonna and, and William J. Eisenman, Ph.D., hey. Doctor of Divinity. We got cool, heavy brass coolions of with, with a lot of hair on them. You see the contradiction here? Seven bells. They don't want him to calto to anything from uh, Democrats or Obama, but they want him to calto to them. I mean, what the hell? If the man has Kalyums, as you're talking about, he won't count out to anybody. Correct? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's gonna stand his ground. You know, he, and you got it. Look, he's an asshole, but Donald Trump stands his ground. You know what I mean? And and he does. There is a lot of truth in what Donald Trump says. I'm not saying. I I still think he's nuts. I still think he's he's bigoted. Hey, but you know, I mean, even a stopped clock is right twice a day. Yeah, well, what I mean is, you know, I mean, look, if you're part of an organization and you've been a loyal member of an organization and you haven't really done anything wrong per se, and then all of a sudden everybody gangs up on you and gets nitpicky you know, and starts threatening you. The first reaction would be, hey, I've been a loyal member for decades. You know, I voted your way for decades. And now you're coming down on me for this nitpicky shit? I would get pretty pissed and pretty belligerent. That's what many of the, many of the organizations that Wilhelm Reich was involved in, kicked him out. <laughs> because Reich, Reich stuck to his yeah. his convictions his, 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 uh, as a scientist. The people stuck, considering stuck. this are being totally irresponsible. But Boehner's guys are getting ready for what is to come. Talk of unseating Boehner is not new, but this latest uprising is getting a jolt from the Republican presidential campaign in which 
anti-establishment sentiment has driven two non-politicians, Donald Trump and Ben Carson, to the front of the pack. Well, th they want to unseat him as uh, uh, Speaker, right, or House Majority Leader. I mean, he doesn't lose his elected uh, title, his, his uh, elected job. He just He's not the Speaker anymore. They want to, de uh, uh, yeah, we move him from that. He Last doesn't, week, he, he doesn't really razzle dazzle you when he talks. He puts you to sleep. So I don't know why he was ever a speaker. Last week, Trump led a rally outside the Capitol opposing the Iran deal, enthusiastically attended by a half dozen House Republicans, who are Boehner critics. During which he made a blunt declaration about the party's elder statesmen in Congress. We are led by very, very stupid people. It sounds like him too. Elder statesmen. I wouldn't want to be called an elder or anything. I, I apologize for the racket. This jabroni next door is hammering. Building a house. I, <laughs> yeah, he's building shit. I like to hammer him with my Blackthorn shillelagh. Go ahead. Influential Republicans say the current political environment has terrified dozens of rank-and-file lawmakers who support Bain, but fear that another vote to back up the beleaguered speaker could lead to a backlash from conservatives in their districts. All right already with the hammering. This is a continuation of the strange virus that's running through the Republican Party, which I define as a weird form of right-wing Marxism, where people are using Saul Alinsky-type tactics, said Representative Devin Nunez, a Boehner confidant, likening the conservatives to late radical activists from the 1960s, Saul Alinsky. Well, I am really, um, I'm, ha I'm, I'm also happy that, um, that um, young people in the United States, college kids, that they really have taken uh, quite warmly to Bernie Sanders and uh, uh, I think women, I don't know about the female vote because there are certain women like these, um, obsessive uh, feminists that just care about putting a woman in a White House, but I think a lot of women will find out that uh, that uh, Bernie Sanders voted in favor of helping women and minorities over his long career. Policies, policies, policies. His, his, uh, we don't vote on gender. His reputation, no, but there are these militant man-hating yes, lesbian uh, 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 feminists that but that the, doesn't give us the finest and the brightest does it no it does no. not Thank you. it does not uh, voting for stupid reasons instead of <clears throat> the man or the woman <clears throat> is not the a best wise reasons, thing of course the best reasons the best reasons are what will he do for me yeah, well, as a middle class person or a poor person, you must always vote for your best interests. Yeah. Just like the rich vote for their best interests. Oh. And that's why they vote Republican. Uh, well, what they do is... Women, female candidates... I mentioned, I said nice things about Barbara Boxer, but I really feel very strongly and, and think very highly of Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts. I think she will make an outstanding vice presidential running mate for Bernie Sanders. She's a, she's a female, but not just because of that, because of her work, her record. Yes. 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 That's yes. all you vote on. Yes. The, yes. You know, it's like Jesus. But her being a woman Jesus is a bonus. Came yeah. with a message. But all we hear about today is Jesus. The message has gone. Bye. Bye bye. Nobody mentions 
the message. Nobody mentions mentions what's what really is in the Bible. They, we just or the hear, message, we just hear the about their, that he came. their made up Preaching. interpretation, sir. The kingdom of God. That's now, what he came preaching. The kingdom of God. God has a government. Yes. Which he will institute here on this earth you know, during the millennium. I, I, got, I want to throw something by you. Are you done with that, that part? No, we got to... Oh, no, do it. Finish up, finish up, finish up. Two odd-looking Chinese soft-shelled marsh turtles... Oh, you're done with that reading. That's what I meant. All right, go ahead. Raised for food in Asia, have been seen south of Boston. And there's concern that they could eventually threaten local ecosystems if they become established in New England. You said the Chinese soft shell? Marsh turtles. Yeah, but are they are they tropical or are they temperate zone? Are they north? Like, could they take the cold? I obviously, obviously they can if they can establish themselves in New England. And become an, inv an invasive species. Yes, then yes, they're, they're, yes. It's just like with the snakehead fish. There are different varieties of snakeheads. There's tropical, there's northern, and we got the northern ones that some idiot dumped in the rivers. New England aquarium experts said Saturday it is possible. Someone decided to release the animals after buying them for cooking. Like these, like these motherfuckers in Florida that just, they don't want something, so they just dump it, you know, not realizing that The it, snakes and the alligators. It's not indigenous to the area, it's in, it, it, it will become invasive, upset the ecosystem. You know, like the Australian farmers in, in northeastern Australia had a problem with pestilence in their, in their farms, so they imported the cane toad from South America, which is a very large ravenous toad, mm. and guess what? Now they're up to their earlobes in cane toads. Now they because there's no there's no predator for the cane toad. No natural predator to keep them in. Simply because in, in, toads, in which have warts on their back, excrete venom. Mm. That's how salamanders uh, protect themselves. They're, they're, they're venomous. Something tries to bite them. They get a shot, a mouthful of venom. So now you have too many toads. See? You, you, oh, I only have ten. Oh, okay, very funny. Very funny. I, I'm talking about like uh, uh, invasive species. So, you know, you have a, in freshwater bodies of water, uh, lakes and rivers, we have the, uh, the zebra mussels, which... Uh, have a tendency to like take over and cause problems. Ooh. I mean, it goes on and on and on with invasive species. Could be insects. They urge people not to release non-native animals into the wild and to report any sightings of the soft-shelled turtle. That's just what I just said before. It's 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 very careless unwise to do that. People on Wollaston Beach in Quincy I've been there. Saw a turtle digging in the sand this past week. And the aquarium's marine animal rescue team picked it up for identification. And it was Mitch McConnell? Close. Oh, them levity bells have seen a lot of action this week. A second sighting was reported later in the week. I like to rap this guy so hard with my shillelagh. The concern is that if it can establish a population, it actually can survive our winter. There you go. Answer my question. It could cause major changes in the ecosystem. Um, um, I, I suppose it's a uh, soft-shelled turtle's a predator. The turtles live in brackish marshes. Oh, like the terrapins, like the diamondback terrapins. And ponds in Eastern Asia. Right. It is said that they are considered endangered in the wild in China. 
but more than 300 million are raised annually on farms. Then why don't they let some loose in the wild to repopulate? You know, our people are so stupid. Repopulate the, uh, the, the, the wild uh, populations if it's endangered. It's endangered, but they have them on farms. Well, that's in, in China. In farms, that's China. They eat them over there. They yeah. cook them. They cook them. They that's cook why they're raised on farms. In China, everything that moves is food. <laughs> the <laughs> animals have become invasive in the Philippines. And have established themselves in Hawaii, California, and Virginia. Oh shit! Really? Hawaii, California, Virginia? Well, the Philippines will eat the turtles. You know, I mean, Asian Asians will eat the turtles. So that's not a problem in the Philippines, but in the United States, it's a big problem. They have been seen in New York and Maryland. In New York. It is said that the ex they are extraordinary looking. Greenish brown turtle has a leathery shell and is between 7 and 15 inches long. I've seen soft shell turtles before. I know what they look like. They have like a, like a pointy snout that they stick above the water level to breathe. It looks to me like here they have a very small head. There's also a Chinese big head. The pointy head. proboscis. Yeah, that's it. That's what, that's how they what they do. They they stick their little pecker nose out of the water and they breathe. Let's I'll see. give it to you when I'm done. Oh yeah, talking. when you're done. I got one done. small one here, which is akin. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. A hundred pound tortoise is back with its owner after meandering more than a mile away. From its hundred and county home. No, they will meander, man. You know, the tortoise wins the race because they're 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 well, they're not they're steady, but they're not necessarily that slow when they want to go somewhere. I had a tortoise for a pet, and uh, if you don't keep an eye on them, man, they're they're down the sidewalk in no time. NJ.com reports that a motorist spotted Sully on the side of a road on Friday and called the state police. Sully's owner, Laura Rorig, says the tortoise went missing from a backyard enclosure in Union Township Sunday morning when she went to church. Tortoises are very smart. They are um, they're very stubborn, extremely stubborn. If they want to check something out and you pull them away, they will keep on going back to that area. Yeah, that's the soft shell turtle, sure. I, you can tell by the, the webbed, uh, leathery uh, shell, uh, web feet, and the pointy snout. They have a long neck, you know, and that's how they, they grab uh, their... I can't see his head. No, they, they, they yeah. project their head and neck out like a snapping turtle, and they yeah. grab, you know, fish or whatever. But uh, I could see them uh, affecting the uh, ecosystem, you know. Any invasive species will have an effect. See? All right. So, I mean, it's not the most attractive soft shell turtle, but... Okay, right there. Yeah. You could, you could see what it looks like. Okay. Um, Did you see that uh, that uh, uh, video on uh, Facebook of the turtle fucking the beach ball? Yeah, making a squeaky sound? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're about done, right? Yes, sir. But, all right, I just want to say, I want to ask you a question. Uh-huh. If it... You hear this motherfucker? If a psychiatrist and a psychologist... We're in a bar. We're in a bar trying to study uh, why these uh, right-wing conservative religious occultists are so obsessed with forcing other people uh, to think like them, like forcing their religious beliefs on other people. What diagnosis do you think you can give somebody like that? Like what? 
Why are they so obsessed with making you believe in their religion that has not been proven yet? Because that gives them security. The Roman Catholic Church did that for years and years and years. But it's all... They, they forced you to become one of them. But, but it's all unproven. Not to them. We're getting back to perception now. Exactly. The whole world runs on that. A big flaw in human nature. Uh -huh. Perception is a detriment because it, it takes you away from reality. Oh, it, take, it does. It, it takes you what away. Did, when you came here this afternoon, what did I say? Does Zeus exist? Did Zeus exist? And re no one's ever proven he does. Correct. But they perceive they did. What about all the Hindu gods that... And they perceive he does. They have stat... And what about in, uh, like in, uh, 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 what is that? Uh, Malaysia or uh, uh, over there, they, you go into the temple yeah. and you, uh, you take the incense. Shrine. And you put a prayer is and it, all this it's other a crap. shrine. To what? To who? To what? Well, uh, you know what I mean? Um, some Asian, many Asian cultures, people have little shrines in their home. Yeah. In the corner. Yeah. You know, and they, they might burn incense. They I mean, I have no problem candle. with Buddha because Buddha is not a religion. No, it's a philosophy. He was, he was a man. He's a prophet. Right. So I have no problem with that. The teachings of Buddhism came from the but man Buddha. The God of the Bible has been bitching about these goddamn other gods since the beginning. They can do nothing, he says. They can't walk. They can't talk. They can't do nothing. I'm the creator. Now what about when Pharaoh's son um, was dying or had died and... Uh, and uh, he was praying to some of the Egyptian gods, and Pharaoh's son never came back to life. No Pharaoh ever has. But they continued, but they continued to practice, you know, worshiping yeah. their pagan gods. Yes, and they killed poor innocent uh, uh, servants and slaves and put them in there in their burial things, even the so that they would take care of them in the other world. Even the pet cat. They, yeah. mummified, they mummified the cat. There you go. Well, cat's got a raw deal throughout history anyway. That's correct. You know? In France, the black ones, one time. Which is familiar, yeah. The French, they used to A big package made of ropes and everything. Yeah. They'd get them all in there and then put them over the fire and burn them. Oh, like a, like a, a net. Net, yes. Like a trap, you know. So because um, because they thought they felt they were they were evil, that they um, mm -hmm. they felt that fire is the way to destroy and cleanse. Well, hey, in in Egypt they were worshipped. Bast was yeah. the goddess, but then in see it, it goes in circles. Very attractive. Sometimes very it attractive. Sometimes it's bad. Very attractive cats, by the way. Abyssinians and and Sphinx and the the the, the Rex. You know, they have the, the long ears. Those Egyptian cats, they're slender with long ears. I believe in what is science, reality. See this this bell, this hotel bell. I see it. I feel it. I can hear it. I can see my hand hitting it. Five senses. Proven. What these right-wing uh, uh, zealot evangelical cultists are concerned with, they, they can't prove anything. It's right. their perception, their insane perception, but they're getting so much face time, it's incredible. Anyway, thank you for joining us for Progressive Discussions. We'll see you next time. Next time we'll see you, it'll most likely be maybe the end of September. I just hope we have some hard-hitting shit to deal out. Oh, it's got to be hard-hitting. Oh, let it let it not be soft-hitting. Dude, dude, no softballs here. Because we don't want to we don't want to upset those jabronis out there. Yeah. Yeah, the hecklers say say goodbye to these. So long, hecklers. This has been a Mega Life Twenty One production.